Mabuhay everyone! March is here. Welcome to the channel. And for today's video, we are going to talk about the sneakers that are coming out in the market. So let's start off first with the LeBron 19s. The LeBron 19s was recently seen in LeBron James foot. And as for the images, these are the high-res images of the LeBron 19s. I think that this is the final product compared to the first leak images. And comparing it to the leak images, this looks pretty dope. This looks nicer. So that's really normal. Usually the leak images or the prototype of a sneaker, especially a signature sneaker, looks less nice like the Kyrie's. Also, it's the same with the LeBron 19s. The leak images wasn't that nice, but these ones, especially this triple black colorway, it looks really dope. It has a very military look to it. Now let's check the materials found in this triple black Nike LeBron 19. It features like a ripstop mesh upper that is kind of translucent. It's similar to the ones found in the Jordan's Mars edition, if you're familiar with that. It is kind of translucent and you can see the flyer wires peeking through the material. And this one feels like it will be lighter compared to the previous LeBrons since it won't be using any battle knit. I think there's uh, underlining material maybe a fabric or a mesh that will give extra comfort to the sneaker. As you can see around the midfoot part of the sneaker, you can see that big TPU piece that will act as a lateral support. So we have been complaining about the lateral support found in the LeBrons. And since that this LeBron seems to have a double stack cushion setup again, this lateral piece will really help in the lateral support Upon further observation, you can also see the TPU piece, or this is a cushion. It also goes up and it will cradle your foot more. Seems like LeBron's foot is way below that cushion found in the lateral part of the forefoot. So I guess this one will be a little bit more supportive compared to the previous LeBron's, especially the LeBron 18s, which kind of lacks in the lateral support category. This one seems to be solving that issue. And as for the back part or heel part of the sneaker, you can also see a plastic piece at the back. Hopefully it's not too thick so that it won't add extra weight to the sneaker, but, but it seems like it won't be that heavy. So I guess this will be one of the lighter LeBrons from the signature line. Since I think, what is the lightest one? The LeBron 11? LeBron 11 seems to be the lightest one. And the LeBron 12, after the LeBron 11, the LeBron 12s became heavier and heavier. And now I think this will be very, very promising in terms of the weight category. Since a lot of people have been complaining about the weight of the LeBrons and lacking of the lateral support and high off the ground. And speaking of the elevation of the LeBron 19s, this seems to be lower than expected. The cushion setup, according to news, is a full and zoom struggle. And below that is two pods, two huge pods of Air Max found in the forefoot part and another one at the back part of the sneaker. They look decoupled in this image. I'm very excited for the LeBron 19s to come out. Seems a lot of improvement have been made to the sneaker. And cushion-wise, you will have bounciness at the same time impact protection, the forefoot and heel, the cushion, like I said, the phylon material, or maybe this is cushion, will be caging your lateral side. So it will really give you lateral stability, which I think the perfect combination, maximum support plus maximum cushion, maximum bounciness and impact protection. And as for the height of the sneaker, seems to be a mid high because it's really low around the Achilles part and it really goes up around the ankle part or around the top of your ankle. So it seems like the feel of the LeBron 9s, if you have that, or the LeBron 8s, I think that ankle height will be the same. And if it's the same, I wouldn't mind it at all. Given that the cushion setup that you'll be getting and the support now that you'll be getting out of this LeBron's and seems to be lighter, can't wait to buy the LeBron 19s. This one I'm guessing will be around 210 US dollars gauging on the LeBron shoes out right now. Hopefully it doesn't cross that 210 barrier 
So this will be around 10,500, 10,800 pesos here in the Philippines. Hopefully it won't go overboard. Let's pray for that. And next shoe that we'll be talking about is of course the Jordan 36. So the Jordan 36 has recently came out in the Nike.com website or the Nike app. So if you are interested to buy, it is currently available in their site. And as for the tech that you'll be getting out of the Jordan 36, you will be getting an upper made out of jacquard lino weave. So based on the tech specs, it will be light at the same time, very supportive and at the same time, extra comfort below your foot. So comparing it to the Jordan 35s, I guess they added comfort to this. So I'm comparing it to the Jordan 35 because the Jordan 35 was very comfortable too. So I hope that they maintain the comfort level on the Jordan 36, which was kind of lacking on the Jordan 34s, which didn't have that underlying material that you need in terms of comfort level. But I still hope it will be still very light and based on the pictures, it seems that it will still be very light. And as for the cushion setup of the Jordan 36, it will have the full length zoom struggle. So shout out to Nike and Jordan brand for really giving or listening to the consumers what they want as for a cushion setup. I think the full length zoom struggle will be a standard in terms of cushioning for Nike and Jordan brand. So rightfully so, it's very comfortable at the same time, very bouncy. In terms of performance wise, it is top notch. And at the same time, it really lessens the elevation of a sneaker. So they implemented it here in the Jordan 36. And right below the full and zoom struggle, there's an extra zoom unit in the forefoot. And it seems to be huge too. It seems like the extra forefoot zoom unit will be a little bit bigger compared to the KD12s. So if you like the cushion setup of the KD12s, I'm pretty sure you will be liking the cushion setup of the Jordan 36. As for the tongue part of the Jordan 36, seems to be extra comfortable. They added padding to it and when you take a close look to the tongue of the Jordan 36 you can see the lace lock there that is paying homage to the Jordan 6. And as for the support that we'll be getting out of the Jordan 36, it uses a two loop band system paired with high sidewalls for side to side stability. So it will give you stability to the sneaker and of course extra lateral support when you're doing lateral cuts. As for the outsole of the Jordan 36, seems like this is the area that I'm kind of concerned with because like on the Jordan 34 or 35, the rubber compound was pretty shallow, but in my Jordan 35s, I didn't have any problems at all. And especially I had the XDR rubber outsole, but I just wish that Jordan brand would thicken and make the grooves deeper for the Jordan 36. But hopefully it will still be very hard. And as for this Asia release, this is a PF version, so it will have extra durable rubber. So the Jordan 36 is priced at 9,695 pesos, so 9,700 pesos here. So that's around 180 US dollars. So still very expensive since it's a top of the line sneakers from Jordan brand. So in terms of performance, the major upgrade I think will be the height or the elevation of the cushion setup, plus the comfort or the extra bounce that you'll be getting from the Jordan 36. And as for the Eclipse plate, it's kind of smaller here compared to the Jordan 35 and the 34s. But I think that won't be any problem and it will still give you that extra spring back and stability around the midfoot part of the sneaker. The next sneaker that we'll be talking about is the Harden Volume 6. If you've watched my other videos, we've talked about the Harden Volume 6. And right now, there's some recent photos seen of the Harden Volume 6 worn by James Harden himself. And I will stand corrected because I mentioned in my previous video that the cushion setup will be similar to the Volume 5s, which has a drop in boost. But upon further inspection on what James Harden was wearing, it seems like the boost won't be a drop in boost, but instead it will be more similar to the Volume 4s, which has an exposed boost on the medial part of the sneaker so that the boost will have extra space to expand. And still based on the images, it looks like you're still sitting on the boost inside. So they will be mixing the Volume 5 and the Volume 4's boost implementation. So there's no strobo board. So you'll be directly stepping on boost. And at the same time, it's not caged like the Volume 4's. Seems to be better compared to the Volume 5's, which was kind of disappointing in my opinion. 
So those are my current sneaker update. Let me know what you think about the sneakers that we talked about. Hit me a comment down below. This has been Marches. Once again, thank you for dropping by. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.